Hey folks, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man here. And a couple of you fellows in uh, watching my video slideshows of my models asked me how I do my setups and how uh, what I use for backgrounds. And uh, so I promised that I would do a little bit of a short video feature and show you exactly how I do it. Um, I wouldn't be so bold as to say this is the right way to do it, just the way I do it. Um, and I'm sure somebody who's a more professional photographer than I would have other suggestions. One of the most critical things has to do with lighting. And uh, let me spin you around here for a second. Now, <clears throat> I have not uh, prepared this ahead of time, other than to... Uh, clean my desk off a little bit. I'm sitting right here in front of my computer and I got my video editing program going on and I've cleared a little bit of my desk which is in a total disarray uh, but I wanted to show you just how small a space. This here is a piece of blotter paper and it's probably 12 by 18 and what I like to do um, is to have a base first uh, depending on the kind of background that I'm going to use and the model that I'm going to use. A lot of my models I use what I infer as a paved base or a paved parking lot and for that let me uh, shake you all around here and uh, I'm going to slide this piece of old roof slate. Uh, I actually happened to find that in the attic of the last house I owned in Pennsylvania. Oh, no, nope, not the last one. The one previous to that. Uh, it was an old 1800s era uh, farmhouse that originally had slate on the roof and there was a couple of pieces up there. And uh, so I salvaged that one and that's what I used to imitate uh, black top. So then the next thing I do is I put a background, a plain background behind that. And all I have for that is uh, that's a paint board. If you're into oil painting, yep, that's all it is. A piece of uh, cardboard with fabric on it used for painting uh, mainly oil paints. And I forget where I picked that up at, somewhere along the line. And you could use do the same thing with, uh, oh, just a piece of cardboard would work. But this has a bat finish and it works well for me. And then the next thing uh, is you have to have some kind of a particular background. And I'll show them to you as I pull them out. I'll pull them all out and stack them up here. How's that? This one here, I've used that a couple of times, but I haven't used it, I don't think, on anything I've published, like on eBay. It's off an old calendar. And there's another background. Uh, I don't know if I've ever used that behind a car, because it's a little bit out of scale for 125th scale that I do most of the time, or even for the Hubleys that I'm doing now. Uh, let me see, that's just papers, you don't want that. This here, these next two photos, are pictures that I actually took back in Pennsylvania of an abandoned garage. Now, depending on the size of the model, depends on how much of a blow-up I need. That one there is done on a matte finish, and it's actually glued onto a piece of cardboard to make it stiff so it stands up by itself. Then I have a bigger one, same garage, and uh, let me see, I'm trying to see, you can't see it in that one. One of the times, ah, yeah, look at this one here. This one here you can actually see a for sale sign. I went to this garage a couple of times to take pictures, and uh, I don't know if the garage has ever been sold yet or not. It did have the old gas pumps out front from the 70s and 80s. And then I went riding around town looking for 
a suitable carriage house type of shop, uh, garage, and I actually photoshopped this and imposed my own sign on there. That's not original to the building. And uh, that one has a lot of shade to it. This one is the same one. A little bit different angle. Come on, stay up there. And uh, sometimes you have to clip them up in place. Let's see what else I got here. I'm going to show you some that you've seen. Um, well, here's my actual final copy of that one that I use most of the time. And this one is mounted on a piece of self-adhesive floor tile. Stuck the picture right to the bottom of the tile. And then the one that we're going to use the most in this particular video is this photograph here. Not sure where I got it from, but this is of Bonneville Salt Flats. And you notice this is all the salt down here. And the picture was actually like this. But I don't want you to see the transition between the salt uh, in the background and the salt underneath the model. So in this case, I take, take my uh, tar, my slate bottom, and I take that right out of the way. And then I take a model and set it up there. Let me see, I haven't got anything right away. Here, how's that? Now, I could come down in here and slide down in like this. And uh, I could take pictures and get rid of that blend line um, with a piece of paper. And let me show you how I do that. Hold on a second here. Okay, I'm going to come right over here to my printer, which is right next to where we're working. Let me get rid of this thing that I printed out. Close my printer up and open it up. And I'm just going to pull out a piece of printer paper. If I get my fingers under it, get one sheet. Okay, that's out of there. Move my model. Set that there. Now, the blend line is going to disappear with the next element that I'm going to add, which is lighting. And uh, the lighting is everything. It makes a whole lot of difference in the way a model looks or whatever you're photographing. And now if we zoom in close and my camera doesn't do close-ups very well, you can get a better idea of what we're all talking about. So, having done that, I'm going to illustrate the process with some photos of a model that I recently uh, put up on YouTube. This uh, Lincoln Packard rat rod, and uh, I'm going to show you how I did those in particular. That model no longer exists in my household. I sold it on eBay, and it's long since been gone. So hold on your hats. Here we go.